Hi Libra, welcome to your mid-November 2019 General Tarot Update. It's Rena here. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I hope that I haven't done your sign already because then I'll have two readings out, but I don't want to go over and look at my computer. I'm just going to take a chance here. Alrighty then. So this is a general tarot update. As I record this, we are at November 9th, and we're still awaiting the full moon in Taurus, and that will be in your um, eighth house. So that's a deep one for you, Libra. Um, that's where you really kind of see beyond the surface maybe of your life and see the see what you know is motivating you perhaps in some area this can also be a great discovery that you have it's also it's actually a great for any kind of um, purification and transformation so anyway I'm saging the place up so I like that. I like my sage. Oh, I hope that's not a leaf blower. I hear something. Hopefully that's my refrigerator, not a leaf blower. I'm going to pick an additional card just for the heck of it. I don't know why. I felt like it was important. I'm also going to pick a card from the um, the deck uh, the universe has your back as just kind of like an affirmation. So the heart of the matter is the Ten of Swords. You may be um, recovering from something that felt to you like a, a betrayal of sorts. Libra. But it's actually like you are, I think the cycle is over of something that has maybe um, been kind of disappointing for you. We have two cards, the Five of Cups to the upper right, that also speaks of that emotional disappointment. And um, this can be when you trusted in somebody and they didn't come through. It doesn't have to be uh, in your love life, it could also be like, you know, career matters. And, you know, of course, um, sometimes that happens as well. You were, you were given, um, you were promised a promotion. You were promised um, that you were going to have some kind of um, advancement that didn't come through, a, uh, a raise, what have you. In the past position, we have the, the sun which is a card that's associated with love and success. Um, and so to have this Ten of Swords kind of like is a very stark contrast. Um, something may have started out really well and it led to this kind of disappointment where you just didn't see it coming. You, you didn't think that it was possible because you had high hopes for it. The Sun card is connected to Leo so maybe this is a Leo person that um, betrayed you in some way and that felt very disappointing. The higher message is the Five of Cups. This is a card of grieving your loss. Don't gloss over it. Um, don't um, try to make light of it, but really feel it, sit with it. Allow it to um, present itself in its true form, in its ferocity, its intensity, because especially um, during Scorpio, when and, uh, and and you know the full moon, that may even be like connected to that full moon, um, because even though this is supposed to be the mid month, um, that's all 
I was gonna say that's all smoke and mirrors, but I mean that's all that's all relative because uh, you know I'm recording this on the ninth, so it's like a week away before the middle of the month. You may kind of have something come up at the time of the full moon that you thought you were over. You thought that you could you, that you, it didn't really affect you, and you realize how much you have been grieving in your own way. And, but, you know, one of the things, yeah, that was what I, what I meant to say, is that they have noted um, that the person has their back on the two remaining cups. In other words, the silver lining of the situation. Really, in, in a case of betrayal, the silver, the silver lining is actually that you see somebody's true colors. Even if it's something that's very disappointing, I would much rather know that um, I'm really seeing who the person truly is rather than what they have been presenting themselves as. Because that's, that's something that is, is really like um, going to lead people astray, you know, to have this false idea of somebody. Um, or, you know, this overly idealized version of somebody. What crosses you is the Eight of Wands, so it suggests that there's something that maybe you want to do that you feel like your hands are tied, and maybe it's due to this situation. So perhaps you're somebody who has been, you know, feeling out of sorts, and... Therefore, you haven't been, um, I don't know, doing something that, that you feel enthusiastic about. This might be a hobby, but it could be like a career opportunity. And um, maybe this is the, the right timing for it. Uh, because once, you know, when I see the Eight of Wands in the upright position, once something begins you never know if it's just going to just take off because that's what the Eight of Wands is. It's just like everything is going at once and there's like all these balls in the air. And that to me symbolizes a sense of forward movement, but you're kind of like stuck, in other words. Oh my gosh, I hear... <laughs> you know, I, if I lived in the country, this would be so easy. I could just like churn these out, you know, but I hear something back there. I know they're going to do the, <laughs> I know they're going to turn on that leaf blower in about 10 seconds. I hope not that soon. Now here's another card that's associated with Leo, and this is what's coming in, is a strength card. So um, is the, is somebody who's a Leo really maybe like um, somebody that, that um, is coming back into your life? Is that a possibility that that you have been betrayed by somebody else, and the the sun card represents a love that you feel is was the one for you, and maybe you got uh, involved with a different person that didn't have a sense of uh, respect for you in some way. I wonder about that because that's coming in the strength card. And uh, we do have Mercury retrograde until the 20th, so that could bring somebody from the past. The other thing, too, is the strength card is about, you know, they have that saying, whatever, you know, doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And in your case, this may be directly associated with some kind of betrayal that you had, where it may have felt really bad but you have emerged from it stronger and wiser. And um, that can only help you down the line. Um, you know, some, something that you may have thought was love turned into grief. And the question is, when you look back on it, Libra, if you can think like how it all happened, like, you know, how, was it something that you should have seen coming? Maybe you, you didn't, um,
pay attention to signs that there were problems um, early on. Um, is it possible that this person was um, maybe one time uh, legitimately in love with you? And it just was a matter of things changing. The important thing, especially if you have Venus and Scorpio, is not to get caught up in uh, the past. And I think that, you know, as you're recovering, you may be getting stronger, but you also have to move forward. And that's, to me, what the Eight of uh, Wands represents. So I had as a the outcome card the Page of Swords. And I... The, the, here's the interesting thing, too. Um, if we look at the Ten of Swords and we're not looking at it in terms of betrayal, we could just say a relationship with somebody who's uh, an air sign. So whether it's a fellow Libra, an Aquarian, or a Gemini, um, this relationship may be starting up. Um, Perhaps the the sun card, the Leo person, is the the narcissist, is the one that created problems for you. This would also be because the fire element is connected to uh, the wands. It's and it's in the challenge position, so that could be a possibility for some people. And that actually the <laughs> the page of swords could be a new relationship. But I'll tell you, if you are uh, talking to people, if you will, uh, or talking to an ear sign, I'll tell you one thing, you're going to be a lot more guarded, a lot more suspicious, you're going to be looking into their backgrounds, uh, because you don't want this happening again. You're, you may just have said, that's it, I'm not going to allow this into my life again. And so I picked an additional card, and I did get the Wheel of Fortune, which is one of those cards which talks about, um, you know, cycles. It's in the upright position, so it bodes well for some good energy coming your way. And perhaps this is something that um, is long overdue. Maybe you've been struggling for a while with this Ten of Swords energy. I don't know, Libra. I never, you know... These tarot readings are meant, you know, as general, and I don't take them too seriously in terms of, like, applying the way astrology is, because astrology can be more, I think, applicable on a universal level, based on the astrological cycles. Um, these, are, these readings are great if you really resonate with them, because I know... When I've watched astrology or uh, tarot readings and they've really been talking to me, it's almost like a private reading. So if these cards resonate, uh, the, the Wheel of Fortune is simply saying that uh, you are somebody who is aligning with your luck. And we're also experiencing the Jupiter change from uh, Sagittarius into Capricorn. And this for you is uh, the fourth house of home and family. So there could be something connected to um, the family, like having children and things like that. And who knows, maybe that connects to the type of person that you get involved with, if that's... And even if you're, you know, not wanting children or if you're an older person, this could be something connected to both of your families because if you're somebody who's connected to your family, um, anybody that you get involved with will usually have to um, get along with your your family as well. And so maybe it's a great uh, uh, luck, you know, lady luck, uh, Jupiter, where both of... Um, the families get along really well. So 
that can be very good and I think that um, it's it's interesting when the uh, Ten of Swords is the centerpiece because it's speaking to something that is not necessarily going to be ongoing. It's just something that may be like, uh, especially since this is an update, just kind of um, front and center in a person's life. So let's, I'm, I'm shuffling the affirmation cards. The universe has your back. And I got for you, joy is the ultimate creator. And it's interesting that, that, that I got that card because um, there was a card. Which one was I looking at? Well, actually, um, the Eight of Wands. And it is in the challenge position. So um, the Wands, the fire energy that the Wands represent connect to um, enthusiasm and I would say joy too. Fire energy is about joy. Um, and so sometimes what blocks our joy is the refusal to move on. You know, the ten of the ten of swords is the end of a cycle. So it's like saying, um, it's all up from here. You know, you can't go any lower. So it's like the end of that negative energy. However, if the person is clinging to their injustice, it's hard for them to see beyond it. It's hard for them to kind of get over it, if you will, because they're very caught up in maybe their own victimhood, the, uh, you know, the end result, if they left a relationship and they're alone now, uh, the betrayal itself, all of those things can lead a person to have stuck energy and forward moving energy. Usually Libras, I think, are pretty good about not getting stuck. But again, that's why I mentioned Venus and or Mars in Scorpio. The moon in Scorpio, the moon in Cancer, the moon in Taurus, where there may be emotional, um, or in the case of Taurus, just the rigid, um, the stubborn emotional patterns that are set. Um, so... The thing is to be able to transcend these very difficult um, emotional uh, triggers by your mind because you are an air sign Libra and that allows you to kind of get, yeah, maybe that's kind of too, is a new way of thinking about that situation that can... Um, allow you to move forward. Okay, that's what I have for you, Libra. If you would like a personal reading, the link to my website, rainamoonastrology.com, is below. Take care. Bye.